Hey everyone, before I get started, I just want to remind you that if you like my content, hit that like button, subscribe to my channel, and then join the Militiaman and Crew Patreon community by clicking the link in the caption. Hey, good evening everybody. It's uh, Saturday and I just wanted to give you guys a quick update on some of the things that have been ongoing. I think everybody uh, is, bit, is really pretty focused and paying attention because they, they, they rightfully should. There's things that are happening in the uh, Middle East with Iraq, uh, with the um, Arab League, uh, with things that are going to be going on with uh, Saudi Arabia tomorrow, for instance. Uh, there's a, quite a few things, but in brief tonight, I got a, I got a few articles, quite a few actually. Uh, one of them is going to be about uh, Iraqi banks, integration regarding those banks, regional banks, uh, potentially them merging, um, and I'll also uh, an implication of raising the value of the dinar gradually is in one of the articles. Uh, there's a water file. Obviously, there's a conference that's going on uh, at this stage because why? Well, al-Sudani and Turkey got together and uh, have agreement, uh, a 10-year one. Um, the next thing would be is that the Arab and the Labor Conference today. Big deal. There was lots of countries involved. Uh, what are they talking about? Integration. Integration is a big thing. We, we've said that before. It is part of uh, even the WTO, for instance. They don't talk about it today, but that's integration. Um, interestingly enough, the World Economic Forum started today in Saudi Arabia. And one of the things that I saw, a clip of an audio uh, or a video, is that they were talking about financial inclusion. They're talking about uh, integration with banking and re uh, reforms, okay? E economic reforms um, regionally and even globally. So that's, that was a big thing. Um, and that just got started today. But also, um, there, there was a, an article that's talking about the development road project. Uh, Al Sudani basically states uh, in his terms, uh, they launched the development road project. That's a big one. Um, the League of Arab States, obviously, it's quite a few countries, um, all in Iraq today. In Baghdad, uh, Nesher von Barjani, uh, Barzani uh, and Al Sudani had a meeting today. Where? In Baghdad. Parliament Finance, they're talking about taxes and customs, digital processing, and then there's an urgent need. What are they talking about? To have non-oil revenues increase revenue streams, and they're going to be based off taxes and customs. And obviously, they're going to mention those things in the schedules. And that's going to be on the table. Um, but they, the schedules for the 2024 budget, the tripartite budget, to be fair, 23, 24, and 25. Uh, and again, another article, Parliamentary Finance, Communications. The communications is going to be part of the communications revenue stream is going to be part of the Iraqi uh, schedules. So, and interestingly enough, you're going to find out as we go. Um, but back up, communications, they're saying here it's going to be second to oil. Okay, the next, the next thing we're going to talk about a little bit is the, is the today was what? The Financial Inclusion Day. So all of these things are happening. Um, and don't forget, Al Alaq was the Deputy Chairman of the uh, Board of Governors from the AMF. And so the AMF is uh, uh, part of that Financial Inclusion Day. So what are we going to see um, at the end? We're going to see a little little blurb about that. The quote is, we will see the dollar decline in the black market. So anyway, um, to get started, one of the biggest barriers article is about the positives merging of merging Iraqi and Arab banks, Arab and uh, Iraqi banks. Um, there's those 14 banks that we know that go back to uh, a year and a half ago or more that were sanctioned. And then there was more. But ultimately, they're trying to make a fix so that they can accommodate uh, those banks and hopefully have the protections that those banks need to be able to be compliant with who? The U.S. Treasury, the United States Federal Reserve. Uh, this particular professor of international economics suggests and stresses that in general, achieving banking integration between Iraq and the Arab world requires joint co cooperation, mutual efforts, and to overcome challenges and obstacles in order to enhance economic stability and promote sustainable development in the region. We've been talking about sustainable development for a long time. World Bank's talked about it. Bank of International Settlements has talked about it. United States Treasury's talked about it. IMF's talked about it. So 
a they have they just started this today no it's been ongoing um, they're basically saying that, that uh, the continuing cooperation of the Arab in foreign banking sector integrating the sector Iraqi banking and the Arab counterparts uh, must begin quickly so we all we all know that here's that article that I mentioned from the very beginning it's not from the very beginning as into articles but one of the key points it says uh, during his speech al Haldal appreciated the efforts of the Iraqi government and the Central Bank of Iraq to create deeper understandings with international banks the Federal Reserve and the US Treasury to expand the integration or to expand the integration of the Iraqi banking sector into the global financial system. Isn't that what we talked about in September 2023? Al-Sudani, fixture, savior, global financial system. Okay, in addition to supporting the Iraqi dinar, in addition to supporting the Iraqi dinar, pretty cool, which led to a, a gradual rise in its value. Well, we haven't seen the official rate change just yet, have we? I'm not sure we have, but that's what it says, which led to a gradual rise in its value, pointing out the, that Iraq is witnessing, it's witnessing it. Okay, that's, what's, <laughs> that's pretty powerful, you guys. So they're very subtle about how they, how they say things. Uh, the Baghdad uh, today, what they hosted the water conference. I think that's pretty powerful because why? They they did do what they said they were going to do. They did cut a deal with Turkey for water for ten years. The development road project needs water. The agriculture that they're going to have, the tourism they're going to need uh, or have coming in um, is going to need water, and uh, and they have that secured. So this is no. There's no. Um, uh, coincidence when it comes to uh, them having this world international conference on water in Iraq so it's awesome so their participation is, is good managing water to manage water as one of the most important foundations for strengthening relations international and the role it plays in developing relations between peoples and societies we all know that Water management aims to achieve stability at the local, regional, and international levels as being the gateway to the future for development and innovation in an effort to maximize its availability to achieve development and prosperity. Basically, Iraq in the past historically has used paintings, ancient artifacts suggest that they use water as expressing that its flow is a river of symbol to fertility and life. Uh, and we all know that there's good reason for that. The launch of the Arab Labor Conference in the presence of the Prime Minister. Uh, so in the capital of Baghdad today, they did the 50th session of the Arab Labor and Conference uh, between, um, started on the 27th, which is today. Who was it with? It was with the Prime Minister, Shia al-Sudani, and the Labor and Social Affairs. Uh, Hamed al Hassadi, and basically that, that session is going to go through May 4th. And what are they going to be doing? They'll discuss topics that address issues of labor markets and workers in the Arab world. The, this whole new re reconstruction, this investment budget, this, this project that al Sudani has, that tripartite budget, is all about creating um, a market economy. And it's going to create, at the beginning, 100,000 jobs real close, plus or minus and up to a million jobs or more in the future. And that's big because every single job, if you have a, I don't know, a good quality job, typically what happens to have a good quality job, and I'm not gonna define what a good quality job is other than that um, it's significantly above mid minimum wage, okay? Um, in our country anyway. But you, it, it'll need four people to support that job. And that's powerful because if, if you have 100,000, obviously that just to do that first portion of that 100,000 is going to create an additional 400,000 jobs. So right now we're talking about a half a million jobs could be um, uh, manifest themselves in a very short period of time. So anyway, the Arab um, organizations, hey, well, look, the bottom line is, is that this, these meetings, this conference, Arab Labor Conference, is going to touch on 
vital issues that directly affect labor markets, workers, and issues in the Arab world. And that's going to include Iraq. That's going to include um, the region. So that's really kind of a big thing. It says that the report will address the balance and integration between technology and the human element, and that the impact that that technology can have on creating new jobs and opportunities will be improving working conditions. Okay, so that's that's phenomenal. So we, we all know that uh, through various implemented activities that take into account geographical distribution and diversity, through training courses, seminars, forums, conferences, in addition to organizations to participate in many Arab and international activities and conferences will do what? It'll promote the education that they need for uh, the upcoming events that are going to be about to take place. What they're pointing out is that there's particular attention that's being paid to working on the digital platforms through the technical t through the technical terms. Will they address and they will address challenges and opportunities related to decent work for young people on digital platforms. They go on to say that it will include include a review of the economic impact of working through the digital platforms on young people and its effects on employment. Uh, they're basically in, ensuring the protection of workers' rights and improving working conditions. So the Arab Labor Organization includes all Arab countries and it's unique among the Arab organizations specialized in applying the tripartite presentation system, which is about what? Governments, workers, employers. They have um, an Arab Labor Organization stipulated that their Article 5, Paragraph 3 and 4 of the organization's Board of Directors, it points out that the committees emanating from this conference, which are the Organizing Committee, the Drafting Committee, the Agreements, Recommendations Committee, the Membership Accreditation Committee, the Finance Committee, and the Women's Rights Committee. Sorry, you guys, but that's, that's basically what it really comes down to, is that they're powerful, they're ready to go. You can tell that based, like, based off this theme of what we're seeing is that you've got the water conference, you've got a labor conference, you have, you have the development pro road project okay, being launched. What are they going to be doing? They're going to need people. Iraq has um, about 60% of their population fits the need for that to get jobs. 60% of their population. Unbelievable. So it says, Sudani, the development road project will provide many job opportunities. No kidding, right? It says the development road project will provide many job op opportunities inside and outside of Iraq. Of course, people are going to be from all over the world are going to be effectively affected by the fact that there is a, uh, a new um, route to get goods to the world cheaper and faster. So that's the big thing. It says that the, the youth group represents 60% of our society and is the backbone of the labor environment. Okay. It says we established the Iraqi Fund for Development with huge capital in order to create an investment environment that provides thousands of job opportunities. The government is working on drawing future visions regarding new economic sectors such as the green economy, the digital economy, the knowledge economy, the blue economy, which is water, that is Yep, water bodies, rivers, and others. I mean, the tourism that you're going to have, if they, if, they, if they have enough water to repopulate those marshlands and they were to uh, rekindle all that, um, that's ancient history. A lot of that stuff is going to have a lot of tourism, uh, guided tours, all that kind of stuff is part of it. You know, keep in mind that, you know, what they're going to do here is, is a collective body of growth and uh, an emerging market, if you will, Iraq will be. And it's going to get big. It says the integration between Arab countries can provide a labor market that accommodates all those capable of working. So 60% of their population, they're saying that they can accommodate that. The prime minister concluded his speech by saying today, we have launched the development road project. <laughs> Powerful. I think it's phenomenal. Okay. What does that entail? Investment? <laughs> The tripartite budget, what are those budget schedules about? Those budget schedules are going to be about what? Non-oil revenues, taxes and tariffs, communi uh, customs, communications. Today they said what? The communications money is going to be second to the oil revenue that they have. Powerful stuff. It's noteworthy noting that the development road project 
uh, railway road, all that stuff is basically about 1,200 miles. Uh, they're basically uh, expected to provide in the short term 100,000 jobs in the first phase, in the first phase, and uh, 1 million job opportunities after its completion. That's going to be over time, of course. So basically, it's evidence that shows Iraq is opening to the world. Al Sudani says he's launched the development road project. You can't deny that. This is why they they are having a labor conference because they've launched something. They needed to have it. They they told everybody we have the water. Now we have the people. So you have the technology, smart technology for the water irrigation and all that. And now they have. They're going to combine that with the people. It's a lot of information, and if you're not paying attention, it, it's you know it can you can miss some stuff. I even miss stuff. Of course, we all do. <laughs> but anyway, Secretary General of the League of Arab States, he says we need to keep pace with the effects of technolo technological um, changes in the labor market. So the Arab states, Ahmed Abu Fett, stressed today that Saturday the need to keep peace pace with the effects of technological changes on the labor market. So that was a big, a big deal today. Um, there's more to it because there's security and stability involved. Uh, there's another article out there that I chose just to, um, you guys can go into the forum and check that out. Or you, yeah, you can go into Discord because uh, our, our Samson, she packs that place full. I can't get to every single article, but the bottom line is she does a fantastic job. Kudos on her. And uh, by the way, uh, Pompey Peter yesterday had a really good um, audio. I think you guys come in and check that one out. And of course, um, when everybody's arriving, uh, be patient. Takes us a little bit of time, but the cool part is, is that Gigi and um, Greg and others will help um, welcome you in and uh, enjoy. That's at patreon.com forward slash mm in crew, and uh, everybody's welcome. Okay. And by the way, shout out to Mark Z because Mark Z uh, had me on his uh, on his show the other day. And um, it was it was actually a good show. I truly enjoyed being there, giving my opinions of what I do, and uh, uh, listening to what they have to say as well. But the bottom line is, is that he gives me he gives me the opportunity to be able to, to give my views uh, there as well. And so that we have um, we're helping a lot of people, not just all of us here in Patreon, but and Discord, which are very important to me. But also we. we we're reaching out to other folks too around the world, and, it, and it's pretty good. It, it's nice to know that uh, um, people really do um, have a need to, you know, f what's going on and for what's going on. So we're pro we're providing that. So thank you very much for being with us. And the next thing is is that Neshervan Barzani and Al Sudani they met today. Uh, why is this important? Well, the meeting is uh, discussing a number of political and security files. Well, th is the timing is the timing interesting? Well, of course it is because there's things that are happening right now. Um, everybody needs to be ready to go because why? Because they're going to give those schedules. They're going to need to see the schedules from the budget, and that's going to be part of the information that um, the North has to the South. It doesn't matter where you are in the country the budget is going to need those schedules. They're going to need the real-time data. It needs to be audited from what we read. It, it is, it has been. So that's what we're watching. When did they say they were going to uh, send this stuff out? I think that we're going to see that sometime next week. In Iraq's time frame, next week, next week starts tomorrow. But So we'll see how this plays out. Al Sudani is going to be in uh, Saudi Arabia tomorrow. Um, and his meetings with these this, these conferences, the water conference, the labor conference. Hey, this guy's knocking it out of the park. I don't know that he sleeps very much, but the guy does work. All right. So then this next one is the parliamentary finance. Uh, what are they talking about? Converting taxes and customs revenues uh, as the second secondary to oil. We, we know that. So that's that's really kind of big, you guys. Oil's a big deal for Iraq. If you remember when, when Saddam Hussein was involved, oil was trading around 35 bucks a barrel, $35. And now it's at 85, 80, 90, right? So anyway, they have, they only had that one basis. Now they have oil revenues, right? Non-oil revenues that include 
communications, second to oil, they say. We, they didn't even mention liquid natural gas, right? So the taxes and customs, they're mentioning that. So the revenue streams that Iraq is having is that they needed to, to add in some of these extras. Maybe they've already included them all, but we're going to see what happens. But um, everything that they do in the budget, it says the importance of the role of the Ministry of Communications in maximizing non-oil revenues, the necessity of including new projects in the budget to increase revenues and reduce dependence on oil, including taxes and customs and revenues. So the taxes and customs and revenues um, are going to be somewhat similar as well. Um, financial expert 2024 budget schedules arrive next week. We, we just talked about that and we're still going to be in a, in a minute here. It says, because why we rely on a lot of the ministry communications to be the second financial resource for, this, for the state after oil. You can find that in Patreon and it, it definitely supports what they're talking about. At the end of the day, uh, it says that uh, the tables are expected to reach the finance committee next week. The necessity of completing the steps to transform Iraq into a global market for transferring internet capacity by attracting customers and the submarine cable services entered the commercial operation stage. So they've already got it in place, uh, which brings significant revenues to the state. So they're obviously just, they're like knocking it out of the park. Uh, and back to the day, what else would we were talking about? So we had the conference um, for uh, labor. We had the conference for water. And today is the financial inclusion day of the Arab, right? Well, who's involved in that? Well, the AMF is involved in that. It says the Secretary of Board of Governors of the Central Banks and the Arab Mon Monetary Institutions Arab Financial Inclusion Day. So what are they doing? It says they've proven uh, that economies and economic groups with good levels of savings are more economically stable, stable in growth rates and able to withstand shocks. So what they're trying to do is get financial inclusion. Uh, they're basically looking at towards encouraging savings to enhance this financial inclusion. The Arab Monetary Fund pays great attention to the developing the financial sector, especially in terms of enhancing financial inclusion. With the aim of achieving comprehensive and sustainable development, keywords again, always when they say sustainable development, pay attention, and financial stability in Arab countries. And what are they talking about? They're, trying, they're, tra they're talking about having products that are going to be able to help save uh, money and produce interest, well, which is it, it kind of interesting in and of itself, but they're talking about providing attractive returns and motivate these groups to save in addition to promoting the use of modern financial technologies to facilitate access. So, by mobilizing the necessary resources to increase savings and investment rates and create new job opportunities, is, is this gonna be basically a benefit? And what is it? It's the Arab Financial Inclusion Day. That's what they had today. So those three things are pretty powerful. Keep in mind that, um, if you think about it, Arab, Arab Monetary Fund, talking about Financial Inclusion Day, who could be involved? It says the Board of Governors of the Central Banks and the Arab Monetary Institutions. And who is that? The Arab Monetary Fund is one of them. Who was the, or is, or still may be a, a member? Um, it says here, President of the Trade Bank of Iraq in the past, Fasel al Hemos, visited the esteemed governor of the Central Bank of Iraq, which is Dr. Ali al Alak to express his and all TBI staff, board of directors, deep congratulations to the esteemed governor for being elected chairman of the AMF Board of Governors. So you can't say that this guy, Al Alak, is, just, is, uh, is the bad guy, for instance. All right, here's a snippet. It's quoted, it's pointed out that there are good efforts that are focused and escalating related to the campaign to support the Iraqi dinar, noting that the strength of the Iraqi dinar derives not from the citizen, but from the capabilities of the country. So what we just described here in the last couple of pages is that um, Iraq doesn't just have oil. Okay, so keep that statement in mind. 
because it's not just the citizens, it's the capabilities of the country. He goes on and says, the Prime Minister Muhammad Shia al Sadana personally is one of the main supporters of the campaign to support the Iraqi dinar. Who said that? al said that. When did he say it? He said it in one of his articles that he put out specifically about Delete the Zeros project. He goes on to say, he points out that it was dismissed from printing the category of 20,000 dinars because of the existence of a category of 25,000 dinars. And we do not wish to expand the current categories, those current categories today, not something different in the future. And why does he say that? He goes, because the project to delete the zeros still exists. It's fascinating. It's, you can't make it up. And it's all in patreon.com forward slash MMN crew. And come in and look it up. Check it out. Yeah, the Ontario news agency showed up you know, last night. And that was really kind of interesting that they became a member of patreon.com. That's, that's, that's great. Welcome, and uh, we hope you like our site and enjoy. So um, as we go forward, look, this last thing we'll say is that we will see the dollar decline in the black market soon. That's uh, the prime minister's advisor talking about that. And it is a prime minister, Fadi, the advisor is Fadi Al-Shamari. He confirmed on Saturday that the demand for the official uh, dollar has risen while it is expected to decline in the black market in the coming period. He goes on to say that uh, the classification of financial institutions uh, in Iraq, according to the World Bank reports, is a positive. It says the central bank's rating, credit rating, Central Bank of Iraq, is an A++ and exceeded the Emirati rating. Wow, so the United Arab Emirates has now exceeded uh, by Iraq in their credit rating. That's, that's phenomenal, you guys. It's big. It says, uh, says a lot. It says that they have uh, trust. It says that they have the ability to pay back their bills, all that stuff. It says Iraq wants to join the international banking system. And on this basis, the government has taken positive measures in this regard. al who uh, who was he? Well, he was the Central Bank of Iraq, 2017 to 2020, I believe. And he was also uh, moved up to the uh, chairman of the board of the Arab Monetary Fund, who was in Baghdad today and uh, praising him or praising the country, if you will, um, and the central bank. And they go on to say that um, from that on, point on, the increase in the percentage of traders that are joining the platform, which is the dollar platform, went from 28% to 78%, noting that the demand for the official dollar has increased um, because they, they use dollars for imports and exports. So you have, um, it's not the commercial side of things, but it's about trade. So if you're, if you're using oil dollars for money, uh, for trade, um, you, you have to do it properly and legally, legitimately. It's going to be audited. It's going to be vetted. They're going to, they're going to make sure they know who their customers are. It says they, they refer to Iraq's agreement with the U.S. Treasury Department on a roadmap that includes a third party, which is the international consulting company, to audit banks. Penal procedures and its decisions are binding on the U.S. Treasury Department. So they have an agreement. Decisions are binding. There's going to be consequences if you don't play by the rules. And are you going to be audited so that we have a, a proper um, understanding of who and what and where the money goes and what for? OK, so basically, hey, look, they got a, a A++ credit rating. Um, Al Alok's performance in his, his uh, years with Iraq has been good. Uh, and his background is finance, money laundering, anti-terrorism. Uh, so some of the articles that we've seen in the past, they, they just don't hold um, a lot of weight as far as him being the bad guy, in my view. All right. Well, anyway, everybody, happy Saturday. I'm glad you're with us. Um, please, if you like my content and you want to see some more and uh, the growth that we might have in the future for newer and other things, please come on in. Um, hit that subscribe button. And um, please, if you guys feel that uh, it, you want to keep this content going, all those donations are really helpful. We appreciate it. This, the community appreciates it because we help so many people. So thank you very much. 
Yeah, so we have PayPal, we have Venmo, we have Zelle. Um, thank you so much for everybody being with me and have a great weekend. Once again, guys, don't forget to hit that like button if you like this content. Subscribe to the channel or join us at the Militia Man and Crew Patreon community for even more exclusive content. You can also donate to this channel by hitting the links in the banner to help keep this page up and running. Your generous support is greatly appreciated, as always. Much, much appreciated. Thank you so much and have a great day.